This episode of Why We Bleep is sponsored by Signal Sounds. Are you the one who is in the mood to buy a bit of kit? I heard about you. Well, my friend, sit and let me tell you of my friends in Glasgow. The ones when I was trying to get into Eurorack and I didn't know what to get and I was trying to navigate the million things I could have bought, try and find the thing I should have bought, I spoke to Signal Sounds. Jason and his crew of beautiful humans guided me through the difficult landscape of Eurorack and we arrived on a system that was both perfect for my needs and very reasonable and he got it to me within 48 hours no matter where I was in the world. And that thing that you must know about Jason is that he's interested in stocking stuff that is rare and interesting. Stuff like livestock electronics who I've never seen but were interesting as hell. And I got a Felix, which is a weird buffered malt distribution system that I think will be very, very nice in my life case. And I also got a bubble sound micro LFO and I also got the Everton Technologies RF Nomad. And that's my system. I've got to be honest, it's quite challenging. But next month, I'm going to get a filter. So if you'd like to make the system of your dreams, Contact Signal Sounds. Their website, which you'll find on the internet, is signalsounds.com. That website again, signalsounds.com. Why? What's up? You alright? Welcome. This is Why We Bleep, and in it, we interview people who make electronic music. And this month, we've got Colin Benders on the show, which is a pretty darn sweet thing, if you're into the modular thing, which you may well be, because Colin Benders is a modular improvisational wizard of the day um he is actually pretty high profile he's been playing some major huge mahusive shows doing talks and generally being famous and well known actually unlike a lot of the other um, modular heroes in my life at least they're maybe actually a bit less known than colin um because colin had a background doing jazz and hip-hop stuff um, and you may know him as Kite Man and the Kite Man Orchestra. He's got a tattoo of a trumpet on his arm. He's classically trained musician type, but turned to the modular world, uh, which is a very interesting story that we'll get into. Um, so what a dude. It's a pleasure for me to pick his brains because he's doing the thing that I'm trying to do, which is try and improvise music and have it be danceable, euphoric and joyful. So we'll get into that. But first, first... Something bad happened. Something awful. I blew up a module. The module I blew up, however, cost me about £35 secondhand, uh, which was a dope for A148 sample and hold module, which I bought to try and improve my live system following some excellent comments that people had made um, and make a video of. Uh, but I blew it up. Yeah, I blew it. Um, by plugging in backwards, which is a thing that you, if you're not familiar with the Eurorack thing, you may not know, but you can totally blow these things up because you can totally blow them, put them in backwards. It's like, um, it's just the curse of Eurorack. And so I've made a video to try and talk about that problem and try to offer some advice in terms of being systematic and being aware of all of the caveats and myriad reasons why that can happen. Um, and it's yeah, a bit annoying uh, because Dupfer bless you, Dieter, um, doesn't, he does not put the information on how to plug his modules incorrectly into his manuals for the modules. Um, and when I challenged him on this, he had to beg to differ that that was a reasonable thing to do, but like other manufacturers kind of always do. Um, because that information is available elsewhere on his site, he says. In the A100 manual, which I trust you've read, I'm sure you've all read the A100 manual. Um, and every time I plug in a module, let me tell you, when I plug in a dirt for module, I read the A100 manual. Um, that's not how people do things, unfortunately. People go and seek the product manual for the specific thing that they're holding in their hands. And I think it's reasonable that the product manual should provide that information because 
That's just helping people understand things by putting the information at the point of need. Similar also to putting where minus 12 is on the module itself, which this doesn't, or putting reverse power protection in, which this didn't, uh, or he didn't. Uh, so I found that whole experience very frustrating, um, and I'm relatively experienced with modular within reason, um, and yet you can make stupid mistakes because just stupidly obvious things have not been pointed out and made simple and made foolproof. Um, and yeah, it's a sort of a value thing, I suppose, in the sense, what would it cost to do that? What would it cost? It would cost a bit of time and a bit of thought is the thing and not an assumption that everyone is an engineer. And that's the problem, I think, where we're in a cottage industry where it really is engineers. And there's no like you know, focus group. There's no user experience designer at Dupfa that's there to kind of make sure, hey guys, do you know, actually this is not really that fun to use. We need to work on X and Y. We've just been doing some tests. We've just been watching the way people use this. Da da da. That that's obviously not happening. And it kind of shows. It's just the disparity between cottage industries run by engineers and the wider world of things we buy. Um, I think often the problem is conflating these two things because we're so used to slick products that are well thought out, that have well thought out manuals. And that's really not what any of the URAC stuff has with, you know, obviously there are exceptions to some amazing manuals, but um, not in their case, unfortunately. Anyway, the other thing of value, uh, which I acquired this month was, I bought a circle on, which if you're not familiar, so the Circle on is a hardware sequencer, um, and it is the dog's bollocks of hardware sequencers, by all accounts, at least, by what people say. And I got thinking about it because there's a new Aphex Twin tune that got released, and I thought about it a while back when the Syro tunes were released, and then some of them were called Circle on, started investigating the Circle on more seriously, because I'm like, oh, damn, if he's making this tune on a Circle on, I want to know what that thing can, is capable of because he's writing this incredibly intricate, glorious, expressive music through what looks like a fairly pretty miserable device. Um, and the more you read about the circle on, you know, it's like drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit. There's just so much kind of fervor on behalf of the people who own it. And then you find out how much the thing costs. And you go, ah, oh, shit, because the Circlons basically, I might get this wrong, it's basically 1,600 euro Circlon, 1,500 euros ink vat um, starting price for the basic Circlon for a hardware sequencer in 2018. Gosh, doesn't that sound like a lot of money? God, that's a lot of money. And I was thinking about that because I think a lot about the value of things and what things cost. And it, you know, that's a funny thing to say, that it costs a lot of money and it's one and a half thousand euros. You think, well, the best will in the world, that's, you know, it's a small, like small run device made by a two person team. It's one dude who's developed this thing. And quite frankly, apparently it's the fucking mutt nuts. It's the best hardware sequencer that money can buy. So, you know, is that that much money when a MacBook Pro costs possibly twice as much as that? And actually a Circlon can replace a MacBook Pro if we're talking about sequencing hardware primarily. Um, and it can do it with way better timing than any computer um, this side of an Atari. So um, it's an interesting one. I started thinking about like what the original prices of sequences were. What did they cost when they all first came out? And the answer is, um, I was looking at the Roland MC8, which was the forerunner to the MC4, as used by Apex as well. And the MC8, when it came out in 1977, it cost $3,295 at list. And that, my friend, in today's money is the equivalent of £26,000. Oh, by the way, also, it took 40 minutes to save a four-minute song that you were writing on the MC8, so that every single day when you finish working on the MC8, you had to spend 40 minutes before you could go to the pub 
or you paid the you know tape op to do it to back your song up because if you turned it off it would just be lost everything that you've done painstakingly so now does like 1500 euros for a thing sound expensive and i mean yeah sure things have come down in price but it's just this kind of there is this sort of mad odd state of value perceptions in the music technology world quite frankly and i think i can i can't sum it up better than just saying that there seems to be a sense that if we can't afford something then it's too expensive like there's an entitlement that we should just be able to afford everything you know and so if something is a premium product that has a price and it's just not what we could afford then it should be cheaper not just like accepting that we can't afford it like we accept that there are ferraris in the world and obviously we can't afford a ferrari um you know and also with the best will in the world like look at what pricey guitars and violins go for you know there is not a moog system 55 nor a synthy 100 brand new in box that could even begin to touch the plural hundreds of thousands of pounds for things in that world and i mean they're just wood right you know it's just a bit of wood some strings you know it's not a computer or anything <laughs> Um, yeah, and what does a decent guitar amp cost? I mean, that's like you are spending upwards of two grand. So it's not weird um, to spend two grand on a sequencer when it's the heart of your studio. And apparently it's amazing, um, but I've not got into it yet. So I will tell you if it's amazing. In fact, I will be trying to make a video of it because there are no videos of it that are very clear and very explainy in terms of what's good about it. Why do people think it's okay to spend £2,000 on one? So I shall do that. And in the meantime, be glad that there are BeatStep Pros in the world because we can all have some sequencing damn fun for very little money, comparatively. So, Colin Benders. He is coming now. Um, <laughs> Colin is coming now. Um, when I met Colin, uh, but a week or two ago, it was 11pm, weirdly, um, and I met him in a London hotel. We went to his hotel room um, to talk, that's all, because he was playing a gig at King's Cross at the Egg Club, and he was on at 3am, rock and roll, mate. So he had some time to kill. So he started at 11, finished at like 1ish or something. So it's a good chat. And as I said before, Colin is an improvisational live modular dude. So if you're aware that that's something that I'm interested in doing as well and a brilliant application of modular, then you'll know that I was pretty damn fascinated to pick his brains. Um, and we talk about things like we talk about truly abandoning the computer and why he did that and embracing the moment of live creation and what that means versus just pressing play to him. He has a very good answer to that. Um, we talk about his weird route into the modular world, um, as in the things he bought to start with and how it develops. Um, we think, talk about what his bare minimum is that he could play a show with, you know, like the actual core heart of all of his patches. And I asked him things like, what do you think when you're playing a live show? What's actually going through your mind? How do you structure and think about things? Um, and many more things besides, um, including the panic of traveling with modulars and the nightmares of your case or half your case being lost by the airline hours before you have to play a show and what he did. So this plus more with Colin Benders. Usually when I try to record something on location, I have to bring my just half my studio uh, yeah, yeah. with me. And that's just... <laughs> do you record your sets then? Or do you just um, do like stereo recordings? Or? I always plan on recording my set and I always forget doing it. It's, <sighs> it's fucking stupid. But that is like, because what you're doing is like inventing music in real time. So it's like, how could you, how could you not want to like capture those moments? Yeah, it's, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous that I don't do it actually. But it's, it's also... Something I found is that a lot of the times um, 
it sounds a lot better in the moment than yeah. when I listen back to it. And it's, um, <laughs> and I know it's exactly. Like, I've literally weird. had that where I've like, I've had to end up like putting the API 2500 and like loads of like Chandler yeah. sort of, you know, EQ over it just to bring yeah. something of that moment True. back. Yeah. It's weird. And that's, I don't know if that's just, is it perceptual? Is it just because well, yeah. when it's in a room, like the room contributes its own? Definitely, definitely. It's, well, it's it's all different mix you make because the room is completely imperfect and always fighting against you. So you do everything slightly off balance and yeah. um, just bring out based on what you want to hear instead of what it actually needs. So yeah. then you get this entire weird filter over everything like uh, uh, what you mean like the room contributes its own sort well yeah of, it's, like, it's, it's like all your levels are always completely off but it's mm. but apart from that is also um, um, uh, the main thing that I run into is um, um, uh, uh, is your life timings and stuff like that like mm. when you're actually building a track then usually you have something like a 4, 8, 16 or whatsoever kind of um, pulse in, in the back of your mind yeah yeah but live, it's just like, yeah, fuck it, I can run this one more round and just do things uh, erratically on the spur of the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it's something that only works right there on the spot. Mm. But then when you listen back to it, it's like, yeah, this, this form factor is... Have, like, totally yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird as well. Like, yeah. I do love the... Like, for me, playing on the module alive has always been such a revelation because it... it it makes me better at making those judgments of when stuff goes yeah. trying to happen. It's like that process of trying to like record music on a computer where you you're spreading out the blocks yeah. and having to stop and start is such yeah. an unnatural process. Yeah, it, yeah, it kind of always amazes me how good music is that is written in that way. Like I don't yeah. understand how people yeah. do it. Do yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, no, I, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. It's like this starting and stopping is something that always kills me. Like I. Mm. I, I I, I, I just can't work do you in that flow. Do you still do that, or do you, are you not writing music on a computer in that way anymore? Not at all anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, should we start recording? <laughs> this is recording. Oh, we're already going. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll just, let me just awesome. check that it's like... Nice. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, that's... That's what um, Go on, sorry. Yeah, no, but you're definitely right. It's the... Um, uh, the, the uh, I Well, I used to do a lot more, uh, like, really sitting down and writing out an entire piece and then going from there, but lately, for the past couple of years now, actually... Um, I just completely gave up on it and just I like fuck it. Mm. I want to do things um, uh, in the moment. I'd rather be good at being intuitive in my choices than to have to preemptively decide a certain decide. course. And you, so you had tried to do that and just like, not enjoyed the process at all. More or less, it's um, uh, like well, I I still do it every now and then when I'm really working on something very focusedly or something like mm. that. But. Um, uh, I just enjoy jamming it so much more than yeah. sitting down and trying to. Because your, ba your background is like jazz originally, isn't it? Is that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, how can you talk me through? How do you go from being a jazz musician? I mean, it, to me, it makes sense. I understand how, but like, I'm still like, how have you made that progression as well? And yeah. especially by, I mean, again, it totally makes sense cutting out the computer. But nice. yeah. how did it work for you? Like, well, it's. Um, um, Actually, the um, it, it 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 sort of happened while I was looking for different ways of um, pr producing my music. Like I, um, uh, I used to be a beat producer aside from uh, doing jazz and classical and all mm. that stuff. But uh, I used to do beats um, and uh, and and um, work on those with rappers and, and and singers and stuff like that. And at some point, the whole process of making those beats and tracks just became super stale and. Mm. Uh, I did not enjoy the sound that was coming out of it. I was always, um, I know it never really uh, worked for me um, uh, the Do way you, I wanted uh, it to. So. As in, you would I mean, did it ever work at one point, or you were just like you just get habitual and? Well, at some point, I guess um, uh, I I did have a good flow going, but then I started second guessing everything I did mm. all the time, and it was just when you have a computer, you, it's so easy to just delete something yeah, or just oh yeah. get stuck on one loop and then push it away and start again. And I ended up with like thousands of unfinished tracks, and um, then my hard drive crashed actually. Oh really? <laughs> and so I lost everything. Oh, that was perfect. And that, yeah, well, that was actually a thing. Like what a what so. a blessing yeah. <laughs> in disguise. So exactly. That, it's, well, at that point, you were literally like, right, screw this. I'm not going to start again. More or less, it was like um, uh, I I did somewhat start again, but then I was like, oh, why even bother? I yeah. I, I want to do it differently. And at the same time, 
I was um, um, I, I just had a pretty successful run with um, uh, with my orchestra project. Yeah, and that just opened up a lot of doors and uh, and, and possibilities. And also, all of a sudden, I had a budget to work with instead of just having a computer and one shitty microphone to yeah, work yeah. with. I, I I was able to actually get gear and uh, and do all the things that I always wanted to do. Um, so I invested heavily in um, um, in cutting out the computer entirely from my uh, from my process. So I had a mixing desk and I had a tape recorder, like a two inch machine, mm. and um, uh, started working with that for uh, 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 for two three years, uh, which was just a purely analog uh, chain. Like I completely forgot how to use a computer in that Amazing. at the same time. Are you sequencing and stuff with this, or are you just playing instrumentation? Uh, live? That was all just live. Like um, uh, that was even without the modular at that time. Like. Mm. Um, 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 well, somewhat simultaneously, I discovered the modular, but I wasn't really taking it serious at that time because yeah. I was still working with the orchestra and doing a lot of live music. And my entire workflow became in the room with people, um, making music together and making changes as you go. Mm. And uh, then from there on, write, uh, write everything on the spot. So the whole principle became um, uh, it has to be a one take and it has to be live and it has to be human the end result like mm. uh, no weird editing and whatsoever so just um what you did is what it is exactly yeah, yeah. just play better if you want it to <laughs> sound better that was basically the whole deal um and um uh by the end of that entire process we had one album uh done fully on uh on 24 track uh, two inch tape nice. and uh my computer was just not part of the process anymore um and then at some point I decided like, okay, I, I want to start making beats again. And I had completely forgotten how my workflow was with that system. Like I had no clue where to begin or what to do and just started getting stuck with it every time. And at the same time, I also noticed that I really did not enjoy the sound of working with computers anymore. Like the sonic results were always, it just sounded thin and plastic and generic in a way. And I was like, yeah, that's, um, I can start investing in different plugins to work with mm. now. But I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a friend of mine allowed me to jam on his um, uh, electronic equipment, and that w wasn't even modular. It was just like uh, a 909 and 808. And he had a um, uh, an MS20 and uh, an ARP um, nice. uh, X, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was. And I just had so much fun with that. I was like, all right, I I want to start doing this. Route. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then when I started looking into than what I would need, I kind of randomly stumbled upon modular synthesis. Mm. Um, and Oleg from Sonar Traffic, um, uh, he uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he, uh, he actually told me to look in this direction, like maybe you'll find something interesting there. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I just got completely sucked in. It was, uh, uh, I, I don't think I ever stood a chance <laughs> once I saw. So did you worked out, you were like, wait a minute, I could do everything on this. Or were you just thinking like at that point, it could be a part of like, you maybe have some electron stuff yeah. or something else and an NPC or something. And go. Yeah, it, w it was more like that. Like, okay, maybe, well, at that point I hadn't fully given up on the computer yet. Like uh, I wanted to reintegrate that in my process but I didn't want to work with those sounds anymore. So I decided like, you know what, mm. maybe this modular stuff can replace my uh, my plugins and all my software and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I'll start using this uh, instead. Um, but yeah, I had no clue what I was doing and I, had, uh, and I had way too big a budget to start with this. So I ended up ordering everything I could find. Um, and it didn't make sense at all. Like I had 16 oscillators and two VCAs and- um, I think uh, I remember you were doing the poly synth or something. Were you doing, I remember seeing yeah. videos of you trying to do that. I was yeah, like, that was this insane man <laughs> trying to like, <laughs> well, fair play, you know, you were like, well, I need 16 of everything because yeah, I want just, to make I, a, I, I need more of this. buy thing. a Jupiter 8 or something like that. <laughs> well, but, that was actually the, 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 most of the feedback I got at the beginning was, uh, because I was uh, was active on Muff Wiggler and asking like, yeah. okay, so how do I build a polysynth? And they were like, yeah, you, you just don't. Mm. Like, the fuck are you doing? Know, <laughs> like, yeah, and just, all like, of the various Eurac polysynth things seem to have disappeared. Like, it's yeah. not a thing. Yeah, exactly. That was just a thing. Like, 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 don't even start. Don't even bother. Just, just stay away from it and just get a voice at a time. Start slow. But by then, it was already too late because I had already ordered everything. Mm. And by the time I got it, I was like, well, crap. 
this actually doesn't work together. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, um, what do I even do with this? And um, miraculously, somewhat, I had enough to make at least two or three synth voices or something like that. But there was just one overcorn sequencer, which is just a 16 mm. step. Um, Repeating traditional yeah, sequences. Exactly. It was, but, yeah. um, so um, I, I got really frustrated with that because I, I had all this stuff. And I had no clue how to work mm. it, so it just more or less basically stood there doing nothing. Uh, except for when friends came over and were like, oh, what is that? What I hear cool, it makes bleepy noises. And then we ended up making bird songs and fart noises, and that was it. And, um, um, but yeah, so then that, that kind of went on for two years or something. And meanwhile, mm. I was still working with the orchestra and doing things. And then at some point, it was like, all right. I mean, just sit down with this and try and do something. And with that Oberkorn, first I managed to patch up uh, uh, three simultaneous melody lines on it. Um, I had two of those things, so I had some weird interacting um, um, uh, patch set up so that with one of the sequences I could actually flick between A and B parts. Mm. Um, uh, I was using some clock dividers to, uh, to, to make them run slower or faster. And from there on... The first thing I patched up was Ave Maria. Nice. <laughs> Why not? Why not? But only the first 16 copy. steps, yeah. actually. But um, And then um, I changed that patch, and all of a sudden I had this uh, multi-timbral, somewhat polyphonic um, patch going on. Hmm. I was like, okay, so this actually is possible. It, 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 it can work, but n maybe not on my system the way it is right now. Um, uh, so then I spent a lot of time just thinking like, okay, so what do I need to change in this? And obviously more VCAs, that was mm -hmm. the first thing. Um, and then I stumbled across the ER 101 uh, yeah. sequencer and that just changed everything. It was the moment that thing arrived together with, um, um, uh, uh, uh make noise herb verb. Yeah. Uh, that was just basically a point where. Um, I just stopped interacting with people, <laughs> locked myself in a room, completely forgot about. So wait, because also the ER one hundred and one is like that's a, a somewhat mythical beast that mm. like you know I've met um, a guy uh, who was formerly VCO ADSR. Phil is like um, yeah. Epsidic now, and Phil feels like that's his sequencer as well yeah. because it's unlocked the possibility of doing a whole show. Yes, but I don't understand it like right. i know like, i don't think anyone understands it who hasn't kind of got one but then i hear such like fervor from so i suppose my question to you is like wh why like and especially also if you were struggling with the technicality or or, yeah. or even the the sort of system building uh, the er 101 feels like the worst choice in a way because it just seems so impenetrable like it's so hard to use yeah. but am i wrong like how does it work you know it's actually super intuitive and that's the funny part about it is um, um, uh, I, um, I initially got it because it has uh, well, practically unlimited steps. Yeah. And not just for one track, but for four tracks at the same time. So immediately it was like, all right, I can write four uh, voices independent from each other um, and um, just write it as if I'm writing sheet music, basically. Yeah. So um, as long as I keep in mind... Uh, uh, the gate lengths, the step lengths, um, uh, uh, and uh, and pitch, then I can do whatever I want. Um, and it's it's pretty funny because yeah, of course you're you're editing one note at a time, but um, uh, you um, uh, yeah you, sh you should really not underestimate your own memory of the notes you have actually put in there because uh, in your mind automatically you already see all the notes you have put in and mm. you can kind of see it in front of you like there is um, um, a sequence actually going on. So those sing singular notes that you see at a time, they all make sense within the scale of things that you put in there. Mm. Um, so the result was basically that the patch that had uh, taken me a week to set up this polyphonic monster with two Oberkorns took me half an hour to program in. Yeah, uh, And... It was just like, well, there's there's just simply no competition. So if there's any module that is worth taking your time and figuring out, then that's the one. Because So the, were you kind of trying to get very specific results as well? I mean, because there's obviously there's different f schools of philosophy with this mm -hmm. stuff. Do you, some people want to build things that are like, 
you kind of turn the dials and you don't know what's going to happen. And, yeah. But it's always appealing because you've constrained the like ranges yeah. or you've quantized it with pitch and timing. Yeah. Or there's the prescriptive, specific, I know what I want and yeah. I want it to do just that. And I mean, yeah. it's like... Because what seems strange is because for your music, you've obviously gone then, therefore, in a more freeform in, in, uh, improvisational route, yeah. which is then feels like that wouldn't be the right sequencer to use. Or can you use it in quite a freeform? Can well, you change it on the fly? And Yeah, and definitely. No, it's, it? um, uh, that's actually a fun thing about it is it, it, it is super powerful and just keeps running on the fly all yeah. the time. And um, it's... Because you have four lines going at the same time, where if you delete one of those and the other three are still running, then you still have enough content to to keep you to in transition. a certain zone and loop. Yeah. And yeah. then meanwhile, you can just alter that one part. And uh, as long as you kind of keep in mind what skill you're working in, then mm. you can make everything fit. And it's um, uh, so in that sense, there's a very big immediacy to how this works. And then. Well, yeah, uh, on the other question, like um, um, uh, hyper, um, like control freak versus just let it happen and and, uh, and 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 follow what you hear. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a spectrum between those two. Like I, um, um, most of the things that I, I do on streams and uh, and what I've done live is always way within the uh, um, melodic spectrum and kind of uh, more more in the dancey or songy mm. kind of mode. Um, I, I love um, uh, noodling and freaking out over just self-playing, ever-evolving patches, uh, which just do freaky stuff and just corals of fart noises, basically. But um, um, uh, but it's a very different kind of state of mind with those two. Like, yeah. uh, uh, one of them is very much uh, rooting you in time, keeping you on top of kind of almost like surfing a wave and trying to stay on top of it for as long as you can. And the other one is more kind of like sculpting, like you do something, you take a step back, you listen to it, add something to it, and just kind of, um, it's, it's, it's gardening, really. Mm. It's, it, it's just <laughs> what happens if I snip this leaf, and what happens if I water it right here, and oh, maybe I, I you know? And, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. and then something blooms up, and by the time you're done, you are afraid to adjust any knot because it's just yeah, playing it's something, and it's beautiful, beautiful thing you know? that it's doing. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, um, um, I think in the end, uh, hopefully at some point I can reach a symbiosis between those two where I can uh, bring in the best of both worlds. Mm. But um, the one thing that's standing in the way is how addictive it is to be surfing on that uh, on that tension wave in a way, which mm. is the the whole life energy of just keep going and adding Create more things. Create something and just, new, yeah. build it up, break it down. Exactly. And that's... Um, um, uh, and especially in live environments, it's um, I'm making most of the music because I'm curious what it's going to sound like if something alters or happens or whatsoever. And it's more energy, more uh, more things, more mm. more. <laughs> so how is like you go from there, and then like how has it evolved in terms of? And I suppose I mean like how? What do you patch these days? Because you are I often like you know seeing you on the streams and stuff. You pull stuff out. You you're rebuilding it. It's not yeah. like what I'm doing where I'm. I'm trying to almost hone in on one concept and refine and refine and yeah. refine it. You are literally reinventing, or it seems to be. So I suppose the question is like, I suppose that the best way of asking this is, what is your bare minimum patch? What, what right, do yeah. you have to have? Yeah. How do you do it okay. to just play yeah. a show like tonight? You know. All right. Well, I think actually, um, um, my um, uh, even though I, I I change things up and I, I I pull stuff out and I change it up and whatever, um, essentially it's still all kind of part of the same core patch I think, and um, uh, it's not really module specific. It's very function specific. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, if if we're talking like what is a bare minimum uh, uh, system for me would be. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need something to, uh, to to control the master sequence for as many voices as I want to use. Like, um, for example, let's say we're gonna do just a very simple acid uh, uh, set, uh, or we want to have a bass line and we want to have uh, freaky noises, mm. um, and we want to control those two. Now, um, uh, for this, I'm all I'm gonna need is two um, um, uh, two sequencers, step sequencers, or whatsoever. 
um, uh, that can, uh, well, uh, so that I can do at least two tracks. So in, th in this case, let's say, let's take two, uh, 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 two units of the Metropolis. Mm. Um, uh, these are fantastic because I want to have immediacy. I just want to slide my finger across something and something changes and I can uh, write on. Uh, the other core value is I want, um, uh, I, I don't want to uh, dwell on one particular module for too long. Like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so that's I, for my gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, like menu diving and stuff like that is yeah, always it has killing. To, you have it, to also, it's just, I have to be able to take a bird's eye view and just be like, yeah. this has been going on too long, actually. Exactly, let, I me, let me change this, yeah, let me yeah. do that. And meanwhile, while you're doing this, you actually already want to be focusing on the next step. And yeah. that's, uh, I can't do that when I'm going too deep in, uh, in one particular mm. module. But well, yeah, so anyway, um, so we have those two my, uh, melody sequencers. Well, obviously, they're going to need uh, a synth voice. So uh, for me, a synth voice is usually um, uh, preferably two oscillators, um, uh, uh, an envelope of uh, a filter, uh, a VCA. Um, mm. Do you like affirm the oscillators against each other? How do you, or yeah. do you just do it for detuned, one detuned patch? Well, it's uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I always cross affirm them, mm. but then um only if i can control it like if, if, if there's some a way sort of turning it CD off yeah yeah, exactly. yeah yeah like sometimes i don't want it and i just yeah. want them beating against each other yeah. and sometimes i want to slowly bring it in but um it's um but usually that's always an option yeah uh, to do so um yeah basically with um uh, uh with these two sequences and these two synth voices you already have everything you need for your bass and your freaky noises mm. now uh, the biggest focus is going to be probably, or the biggest um, uh, space constraint is going to be uh, your drums. Yeah. Probably because that's, um, uh, you have your drum sequencer, which is probably pretty big. Um, uh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they always are. Right? Yeah, the ones that I want to use are always... 16 steps at least, you exactly. 16 buttons. Yeah, yeah. so, um, uh, and then... Uh, for immediacy's sake, let's just use uh, a mix of tip top and X inverted drums, uh, mm. eight lines, uh, so that you have your kick, snare, hi hat, um, uh, ride, uh, secondary hi hat. Clap. So you would use like circadian rhythms or something? Yeah, exactly. So, but so you manually, you have to manually. And that's the that, circadian rhythms can be it's like, you know, overwhelming, or do you have things pre programmed? Mm. Do you like, or do you just. No, it's, it's usually on the fly, but then yeah. again. Um, with the techno sets, for example, there's not a lot of variation I, I have to do. Like, it's, mm. so um, is it more about muting stuff? Then? Yeah, it's about then, muting things and and just yeah. flowing it in whenever you want to. Yeah. And um, so that's usually not too uh, time intensive yeah. um, or, or or focus intensive. So that's um, uh, that's pretty much doable. Now the um, uh, the Dupfer trigger sequencer is actually more immediate in that mm. sense because you have all. Um, 16 steps for all eight parts. They're right all just there, aren't they? Like, They're right on, there. So, on the grid. Yeah, yeah. Um, so probably let's use that one. Um, and then you got your drum voices. Uh, then the last thing is probably going to be, uh, um, well, not the last one, but um, the next part is going to be your effects. Mm. Um, uh, let's just use reverb and delay. Um, yeah. um, preferably the. Um, uh, Right now, I, I actually trashed my, um, uh, 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 what is it, the herb verb? You killed it. I killed it. It's, what? It's, How did you kill it? I have not. Plugged it in backwards? Uh, no, it's, I. Oh, I, just, it died. It, it just died. I've it been using away. it for too long. It's, <laughs> it's just, like, it's I, all of its reverb was used up. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's, it, it just no emptied out, like, oh, Shit. not again, you know, it's just, it, so it just kicked the bucket. It's, uh, it, it, it was a gradual process. Like, at first, there were a couple of positions I couldn't um, yeah. use anymore, and then, uh, my CVing didn't work anymore, and then it started sounding weird, and then at some point it just did nothing anymore. Wow. So it, um, it just got old, exactly. passed away. It's you know, hey, it happens to us all at some yeah, point. At some <laughs> point, it's just we all have to go. But it's so now I'm using uh, an EOS reverb. Um, yeah, the audio damage. Yeah, one, exactly, yeah. and um, and that one actually sounds really really good. Mm. It's, you can't really adjust it live because it gets all kind of weird aliasing and stuff like that. Oh, right. But, um, but if you leave the setting, then it's actually, it, it works fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's um, the, it's a shame about the herb. Because yeah, the herb verb is so, like, you can just, like, twist and turn it. Yeah, it's, it's but, but that's probably what happened. I got too enthusiastic <laughs> with it. And just, <laughs> too many smoky clubs. That's yeah, the thing. Or, like, all that stuff. Too much, like, um, sort of, you know, yeah, clouds of smoke. Definitely. No, but then the... Um, Delay. Uh, yeah, delay. Um, right now I'm using a modcan. 
yeah. but um, uh, I, I've been hearing a lot of fantastic uh, 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 news about the. Um, uh, uh, was it the Strymon one? Yeah, yeah. Strymon. Oh, Christ, yeah. the Magneto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Magneto. Yeah. It's, that thing uh, does sound like it sounds ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's like, I, I it's like have Choir it of Angels because it's got like shimmer and stuff yeah. and like all this kind of thing. It does yeah, sound it's, great. I, I, I do think that. Um, um, that would probably be uh, be the one I picked um, yeah. um, to use live because it's it, it's just yeah. I, I think it's it quite malleable as well. Like you could yeah twist and turn it exactly. There's uh, it, there's a lot of immediacy there and mm. a lot of room for for happy accidents. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. It's, um, but then feeding into those modules, uh, what you're gonna need is um, uh, multiples and mixers. Right. Basically. Um, Why multiples and not just a mixer with sends or. Uh, a mixer with sends could actually work as well, uh, but I don't have those, so the way so I... So hard to find, like, your yeah. mixers that have two sends as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So many have just one. Yeah, it's, well, the, um, uh, the performance mixer, the... Um, the WMD, yeah, uh, yeah. Does it have, I believe that one had two, right? Or I think it does. You might, uh, maybe you need the expander, I don't know. I know the Bifaco one, that does have, that has three sends and with stereo returns That's actually well. pretty awesome. It's very it's, awesome. It's very that's, good. that's um, And it's also got mute switches, which are momentary as well. So you yeah. can do like little down paddles and okay. just like stab in your like, yeah. line. It's really, it is that's really good. good. Yeah. Um, plus it has cues as well, so you can check stuff. That's very good but actually. It's like, well, checking, I... I don't think I, I would actually to. use that yeah. because it's... <laughs> you just let like, two seat in the pants. Yeah, to be it's like, <laughs> like, like... There will be no checking. Yeah, the audience just, will check with me. Just do it and we'll see, like, do it, then fix it, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, but, well, it, it, it's good it's on there. Mm. Um, uh, if there's mutes, that's actually... Um, it, uh, you seriously should check that mixer out because it is... that. As far as I'm concerned, like, having looked at all, right. all the mixers, and I was at Superbooth and I talked to Manu, the guy, he's like, have you seen that mixer? Yeah. And he's like just showed me it. I was like, it's like you've just made the mixer that I've, like, all, all of right. the things that I needed nice. in the mix. And it's got, like, three, you know, it's got, like, high, mid, low EQ um, and the direct outs as well on the channel, so you Holy can shit. you can record it. But it's wow. more just, like, the three orc sends, the stereo yeah. returns, so you don't lose any channels to get your returns. Wow. Six, and then mutes. I can't remember what else. Dude. But it's, it's good. I, I, I well. had no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah, it's good. that good. one's going in my right. It's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, th because that completely, um, yeah, that just that yeah, that kind of makes the multiples and mixer uh, solution obsolete. Mm. That's um, uh, because that's exactly the functionality you want. You want direct. Uh, you want to retain your direct audio signal for what you're using. Yeah. Uh, through the direct out. Uh, no, does it have direct out on each and every channel? Yeah. Okay. That's the only fantastic. trick is that the. Um, the stereo returns don't have direct outs, so what you would have to do if you wanted to track them, you'd have to molt them off. Do you know okay. what I mean? Like copy yeah. them out and then record them separately. Yeah. But yeah, that makes you know, sense. the concession is all six channels do have a direct out, um, and then the effect sends can be pre and post fader as well. So you can That's cool. you can do sort of pre fader and yeah. have just echo as yeah. a way of bringing things yeah. in and stuff. It's like That's fantastic. It's it genuinely okay. is like the one. Um, I'm 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 remembering good. that one. That's good. Um, <laughs> that's good. And it's so, just released now, or is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been out for a while. It's just like I think we just with Bifaco, it's just maybe not the gear that we're right. all. It's not in the news. Do you know what I mean? And it's not no, sexy it's, because a mixer's yeah. just a mixer, but. Suddenly, when we're all really do yeah. want it to be in our case, so oh, we're not bothering yeah, yeah. with an external mixer. Yeah, no, it's seriously because mixers right now is something that makes me the happiest out of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's all, uh, uh, like I, I this with just I had just a little Mackie mixer, and I was like, still, you've got to make like fourteen connections before you play a show, and yeah. it's just the sweat going down, especially if you're at a festival where you've got. 15 minutes or yeah. something just to be like fuck get everything yeah. working like just make it work <laughs> like, I've had it where like I started playing and my Herbverb cable was just unplugged and so just like no <laughs> but you just don't need yeah. to you just shouldn't need to think about those no, things no exactly it's, it's, um, it, it needs yeah. you need modules that really do cater for the live musician definitely, like, definitely but I do feel like more of that has started to happen like uh, yeah. immediacy has become um, a more and more of a hot topic and it, uh, it, it's long gone the days where it was all catered towards just studio equipment and menus um, and, all and, menus and stuff yeah, like yeah. that and it's uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that uh, um, uh, that that trend is kind of slowing down or something mm. like um, most of the time most of the modules that I have that have serious menu diving I haven't touched them more than the week that I purchased it yeah. and then it's just like alright for later to discover yeah, but yeah. I just end up not using it 
Yeah, um, I mean, I think there are some good. I mean, there's some good exceptions, but I, mm. I totally agree. Like it's the, the especially, but also in a live situation, yeah. you just have to have dedicated controls True. for things. Yeah. You just can't be yeah. menu searching it. No, exactly. It's, it's got to like, be twist and turn. Yeah. yeah. No, and it's like um, the only exception for menu diving is when it's really seriously worth it. Mm. Like um, um, uh, effort reward should always be completely. I would put the. One thing that I've, I've found that's like that is the Intelligel Rainmaker, which is like, you know, the yeah. super, it's almost like yeah, yeah. a H3000 in a, yeah. in a, in a Eurac module. And it is, it's like pitch delays, but yeah. where every delay can be panned and every delay yeah. can have a filter and it takes time to set yeah. that up. But then frankly, you save your preset. And like, yeah. I've got one preset that I made on that, that I've basically played like all of the last like four shows, nice. okay. just effectively using yeah. that. All right. It's like doing fifths of delay, oh, nice. but it's it's just yeah. it's just amazing because okay. it yeah. mainly because it pads out the stereo field so much. Yeah. It, it almost feels like it it's giving you so much of stuff cool. for free. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When yeah, you like, yeah. Well, feel- shit. It's actually when I was talking about the whole immediacy thing and that it has to be worth it, or modules that you have to dig into at some point. Mm. I was thinking about the Rainmaker because yeah. it's. I and know it, it can do so much. Same with the shapeshifter, for yeah, example. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one also it, it has made the most ridiculous sounds out mm. of all my equipment. But um, uh, I haven't taken the time to really to dig like, through it. Yet. Yeah, yeah. And that's. I think um, it's and for me, it's just a case of doing that and just saving, knowing that you can save presets. Like, yeah. I will never. I, I, there's no way I'll ever go into the menu settings if I was yeah. playing a show, but that module is good because it also has like you can set up like mod knobs. There's like a mod yeah. A and B, so you can okay, yeah. you can set up parameters that you know yeah. that you can mess with. Um, yeah. But yeah, but it's it's quite a space. You know, it's like that big. But yeah. okay. you were talking about your like as an alga mod, the cases that you've got. Yeah, you've got yeah, exactly. like a fair bit of yeah, yeah, definitely. Of so real alga mod is. Um, uh, it, I was for a long time was looking for what is the. Um, uh, uh, what's going to be the best case to travel around with? Yeah. And um, I was really, um, um, I don't know, I, I was kind of panicked about airline regulations and stuff like that because Very I have much. to fly with that well, stuff. I've been going through and, as well. Oh my god, it's, um, it's an, uh, just the idea we were saying before, like before we started, like, but the idea of having your case and then being told it has to go in the hold. Yeah, for it's example, like, it's uh, it's stuff like that. Or what has happened um, uh, to me like two months ago or something. I was playing in Spain oh, yeah, oh and God. first they bummed me off the flight and then they forgot to ship one of my cases. And I arrived there at the club with half of my system, which <laughs> luckily was the drum section, but we had to kind of uh, like half an hour before the show, we had to cut open two cables so that I had outputs at all. And it was... Oh, it, oh wow. it was ridiculous! But I um, saw you t- you were tweeting about that. It's like you yeah. like it's an acid sh- set tonight, guys. Yeah, <laughs> so you literally you had like a sequencer in there. So I didn't look at the. No, ca- I didn't like, really clock the case, but I, I love that that you were like, I can make this work. Well, I can make it this work. Well, I had to make it work because it was like literally half an hour before my show, and I was like, well, we're not gonna be able to cancel this now. And luckily, um, like one system had uh, uh, had my sequencer. Uh, or what is the melody sequence or my voices and the effects. Yeah. And the other case had um, uh, uh, the um, circadian rhythm. Mm. It had my drums and it had one Metropolis and it had one um, uh, Macbeth set. So the, oh, you're uh, set. Yeah, well, you that was the thing. You get some delay on that bad boy. Like, you're pretty much... Yeah, that's well, it's show. like there was... A, well, well, that's that what was you were talking like, about. There was no... You need your weird sounds, though. Like, yeah. I don't know where they would have come from. You just have to, like, shout into a mic or something. Yeah, something like that. I, it's In the end, I didn't have any of that. It was just those dry... And you know how awkward it can sound when you just have to dry... Oh, like, uh, no effects at all. No effects at all, because all that was in the other rack. But, you and know, Macbeth, a good Macbeth voice through a big system. But that that always works, and it's <laughs> and luckily the one thing that uh, uh, that did work there was that uh, I did have my uh, compressor in there, the okay. uh, the L one um, uh, micro compressor. I think it's. I called. don't know that. Yeah, what the, a module is it? Yeah, it's a module, yeah. and it's um, it's actually a pretty fantastic module because it has an envelope output, mm. uh, so you can make any VCA uh, 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 into a compressor that way. Uh, so do you use it for side chaining or something? Yeah, like exactly. It and then create that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it, I, I I just cram my kick into it, and the envelope out goes into all my uh, signals. Yeah, and so everything ducks away ducked down leafly. by the. Exactly. How like how important is side shading for your? I know I mean I can hear it in the tunes, but because that's something I yeah. don't have in my system, and I have thought about. Okay. Because it's, it's for me personally, my my and see if you agree with this, but it's like my feeling is that obviously the side chaining has a sound, yeah, which is just 
pumping. But yeah. also it's it's to do with the fact that in a live situation when you've got very poor monitoring, yeah. you're kind of just cramming the sound stage with sound. And it's yeah. and it's knowing that when you do drop the kick, yeah. it actually comes through. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Otherwise your drop comes and there's so much low end that yeah. people are like, what, yeah, like, dude, it? yeah, sure, I'd like to dance with this, but first, <laughs> yeah. can you explain me what's going on here? It's like, <laughs> I'll need a kick, please. <laughs> yeah, yes, please. Because is, no, is that what it, is that why? Or basically, you, it's yeah. a cheat. It's uh, yeah. it, it, it really is a cheat code to uh, to make things work easier, and it's yeah. um, uh, it, it's an easy mix um, module, yeah. really, and it's um, especially in live environments, you can't really hear the side chain going, but you do hear it punching through, and it's. Yeah. Um, uh, and on top of that, when you do fine tune it properly, then it gives this entire kind of wobbly dynamics yeah, yeah, the push -pull. Uh, vibe going, and that's yeah. um, and that do does tremendous things for uh, uh, for your energy flow. Really, mm. so I really enjoy the sound of that. And you can take it too far, like you can literally just squash everything away into your nothing but just your kick and mm. some bass rumble, but. Um, when tuned to a certain sweet spot, then it's it's mm. it just works with everything. And, what, um, um, and like when you're actually playing as well, what is your kind of like mental flow? Like, can you describe like what your mental state is like when you're playing a dance show? You know, yeah. you've patched up for improvisation effectively. And I mean, are you? I suppose this is two questions. Like, how how much are you? Because what sequence are you using? Like tonight, for example, are you using the one on one, or is it? Yeah, tonight yeah. is the one on one, and it's a circadian, a circadian rhythm. Yeah. And oh yeah, and the Metropolis because yeah. that one is just you flick your finger across it, and something happens, and that's it always good. <laughs> it's, it, it's so then have you decided on the scale that the, you based it off the Metropolis, and then program the same scale into the one on one? More or less, it's um, um, uh, like. Yeah, the funny thing about skills is that um, 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 there's a lot you can do without uh, with changing only the baseline. For example, like yeah. if you're uh, if you're in C minor, for example, uh, adding in uh, uh, an A flat in the bass, and all of a sudden you have a major chord. Mm. If you add in uh, an F, then you get this weird dominant uh, on top of it, and there's so many. Uh, weird notes that you can add in without changing anything else and still have entire chord changes and, and shifts and everything. Mm. Um, so basically that's how everything is set up is I um, uh, I more or less keep in mind which notes to use and which ones to skip. Um, in the 101 do you mean? Yeah, in the yeah, 101 yeah. And, uh, and just in how I program my melodies and then from there on you can just go a lot on the fly and it's uh, the one thing I don't do too much in a live environment is completely modulate, of course, um, mm. um, uh, which is a bit of a restriction that I'm trying to solve at some point. Do you say, um, well, completely modulate what the, the melody or the Yeah, chord? exactly. Like, um, 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 uh, most of uh, what you hear, most of my music is most of the um, uh, uh, chord schemes that I'm using, they all fit together uh, uh, well, but they're never um super complex progressions right. and stuff like that and you have to sort of stay within a range to make sure that exactly. it works it's yeah. like yeah, yeah. And if that's, you go too uh, far off piece then you're like yeah well then i can find my way back in time to to keep the energy flow going mm -hmm. so it's that's kind of the trade-off uh i'm noticing in uh, uh in life environments that um uh i kind of have to dumb down my um uh uh, my quest for uh, uh, chord progressions and yeah. stuff like that and focus rather on what fits together, what works, what I can do on the fly and uh, fits in my general flow of playing all the other stuff. Um, uh, so, um, but yeah, that way the Metropolis and the Air 101 and everything is tuned together in a way that always works well. Works. Um, and yeah, the general state of mind during just uh, those shows, it really depends. Like, um, um, it's always it, it always starts with the first kick and then it's like fuck okay what am I gonna do <laughs> and yes. then from there it's just like well I, I guess I can try this and yeah. then at some point it's just kind of a flick of a switch that goes from oh my god why am I here to oh my god this is awesome and then it, <laughs> and then it just keeps going but um, it, it kind of ping pongs between those two states, uh, states all the time during a set yeah, because yeah. whenever you're doing something for too long you immediately feel like okay, I uh, I stretched this section for too long, and yeah. now I have to think of a way out. 
but I'm uh, I missed my wave right now. So mm. um, um, missed your wave, like the sort of the like the yeah, spirit of the thing. Exactly, it's like you should always, have changed it earlier. Or, yeah, it's like Captain Hindsight is always standing on my shoulder, <laughs> like what you should have done is this and then. But um, like I was busy programming the melody, <laughs> like just, give me a break. Voices, please stop. And it's, but um, no, but that's. Um, um, I, I think that's why I keep on comparing it to surfing in a way or or, or, or whatever kind of it's, sports it's because a great it's, analogy, yeah. uh, it's like the tension span is always there and it's kind of relentless. So mm. um, uh, and when things go really well, you're really riding it and you're on top of things and you can just respond very quickly to, hey, I, I can do this right now, but I'm going to kind of extend it. And then at some yeah. point we're going to work towards it. And the moments when I'm not really on top of it, then things get a little more hectic, get more sloppy, and um, um, then it's um, um, uh, and the first thing you notice is that that energy is just not really mm. right. That's and, a scary proposition. Like, and I've been, I've been there. It's just like, fuck. It's just not. Ah, mm. it's not right. It's not working. Exactly. And it's, so it's just not. It, it, the worst thing is just it's just getting boring. It's yeah. like that's, that's the biggest the thing. fear. Yeah, yeah. Biggest no, fear. that's the um, um, uh, the the only mistake, or basically, yeah, the biggest fear or the biggest mistake or the biggest thing that's working against you is the moment it gets boring yeah then there's actually not really a way coming back without yeah. saying like all right thank you guys good night yeah um but uh, then that's that that fear like you can't you can't almost let that happen no like, but, exactly. I, but i do know that i don't and i've been in that position where i'm just like <sighs> yeah. i'm in a corner <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, like, shoot, and the audience is kind of just like eh, should yeah. we go get a drink like, yeah, exactly <laughs> like and 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 that's it like the uh, the, the ultimate judge is not so much that people go like you suck but it's more they just walk away yeah and that's the end of it yeah um, especially and, for a festival or something it's like you can yeah. do that like it's not yeah, like it's, you're a captive audience at a gig or something like yeah no exactly and that's just um, uh, so um, I think that's a big risk um, mm. um, uh, you're taking but at the same time I mean, if that's the worst that could happen, um, uh, if, if you're doing extreme sports, the worst that can happen is you could literally die. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there is, all things considered, it, yeah, as extreme things, sports go, it's not yeah, that it's, bad. No, it's, it's, it's pretty safe in that your sense. Your case so. could fall on you, though. That's yeah, like, this is true. Is or, or your phantom power makes everything explode. Oh, yeah, well, when, that literally happened tonight. Yeah, well. like, like, indeed, the way <laughs> I make my wasp filter just disappear. It's oh, right. in a puff of smoke. I mean, it's, it's not as bad as an herb verb, at least. You know, it's only yeah. 60 quid. Yeah, it's... Versus 350 or something. Yeah, oh, yeah that's interesting. It's like this sort of... Um, and it's... Do you have any tricks? Is there anything that you... Because I was thinking, actually, there was... Um, I maybe talked about this. I don't I've never told you this, but I saw you at... Um, it was super booth like two years ago. Okay. I was like walking through, you know, on like the mezzanine bit where there's all yeah. that dirt for stuff. Okay, yeah. And I was like, just walking the show. And then I'm like, I was like, what's this? Like, there's something <laughs> happening over here. And I look across and I see this, this guy with like big fuzzy hair just freaking out over just like the, there was like a, whatever the dope for system yeah, was yeah. there. Um, I was just started listening. I was like, it sounds fucking great. Like, I really like this. And nice. then I was just watching. And then I suddenly was like, and then I realized who, I was like, ah, yes, I know who this is. And then, but what struck me was how, I was like, has he put this system together himself just to play this or has he just come up and rocked up? And there was obviously like a big semicircle of yeah. people watching the show. But I remember that you were using, you basically had, and it, it was a good lesson. It's kind of why I was talking about this earlier. It's like you had like a kick. I think you, well, you patched up basically a kick. You might, you had, I think you had some hats. You'd like made a hats patch. Yeah. But then you had like the dirt for like A one one two like sampler, you know the weird sample. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you just had something just going like that. Yeah, yeah. But you you'd VCA that so you could just bring in little stabs, yeah. and then you just had like an acid y bass line. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And you were using his new like performance mixer. Yeah. But the bottom line it was a kick, an acid -y, or kick hats, acid -y bass line, and a weird voice. Yeah. And you were rocking that those four elements in yeah. and out and up and down. And keeping it going, cool. which yeah. I thought was really, I was like quite impressed. Nice. I was like, you nice. know, I doff my cap because awesome. it's that, it's that question of what is the bare minimum that you need and having the ability to, yeah, to, to, to shape those, to, to build a roller coaster out of yeah. just those elements 
is hard because you've not got a lot of stuff to play with at that point. It's like bringing in the kick, yeah. taking the kick out is one trick. Yeah. And it's like, what other, what other sort of tricks do you rely on in terms of how you structure and pull things in and out? Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, really yeah. hard to quantify. Okay, but. yeah, in that sense. Um, well, yeah, uh, if you put it that way, then I think the, um, uh, the rack we were cooking up earlier is way overkill because <laughs> <laughs> by now we already have a full, like, yeah, bring in everything. And yeah, that's yeah, the bare oh, yeah. But in, in, in this case, yeah, it was, it's pretty funny because that, um, um, that the dope for system, it wasn't even a show back then. I, bought, um, um, I was actually just checking out a couple of modules myself there. And mm. every time when I walk past that particular rack, it, it's just so inviting to <laughs> play with because the doper stuff is like um um uh it is um uh really not pressuring you into doing anything mm. like it, it is just a function and do with it whatever you want like yeah it, yeah it's it, it, it just does this and and, and yeah it make do it doesn't force mm. you into a particular way of working no exactly I think also it's telling that you could come up to a system that you didn't know and yet patch it up it says mm. a lot about the power of dirt for that their stuff is is so straightforward that yeah. whereas there's a lot of URAT modules that you can't just walk up to and no, you, there's exactly. a lot of systems in that show you can walk yeah. up you'll not have a good time no. unless someone's there to tell you how it works yeah yeah no that's um, that usually is actually my my biggest test with modules like um, um, can I play this right now <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> no right. help exactly I, I, I don't want to need to be a certified specific module patcher or whatsoever I just want to power it up and play with it and if it sounds awesome then I'll, I'll keep playing it mm. and it's I might be a bit spoiled in that sense that I uh, expect modules to be fantastic without immediately. Yeah, yeah but in many ways what you're saying it, is they just need to be simple enough that you can understand them it's exactly like, I mean it's the uh, I, I I would like to find the complexities myself in how I put them together yeah. and it's, but um, in that respect it might be very yeah maybe old school in my uh, uh, in my approach towards modules that I'd rather have a bigger rack with lots of singular functions than I have uh, one module that does it all because that's why I walked away from com computers to begin with. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't want to be programming, I want to play. And, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, with um, uh, with that doper setup, um, I think the bare minimum there is um, um, uh, basically all you need is whatever you need to groove. And it's... Mm. Um, and in, in, in this particular case, the... Um, uh, I'd actually worked in a sidechain there as well, by the way. I think <laughs> you had, yes, yes, um, okay. Uh, that was just an inverted... Um, in invert uh, the like envelope, follow the thing, the exactly. kick, and then invert it and send it out to all the other yeah, teams. And, yeah, and, and, and that's, the, that's the way that one worked. It's, um, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's basically that, a kick, snare, or whatever snare, just something noisy to, mm. uh, to the percussive things, a hi-hat and a bass line, and... Um, uh, and and plenty of filters to to mess mm. with your baseline if you want to and it's um, octave switches uh, as well. which that's, all the dirt for oscillators have you know yeah just that's like, that's good it's just that and uh, and and that's that's it really yeah like um 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 and from there on I I I don't know the biggest um um I I, I always find the biggest impact on things is pulling things out and pushing them back in uh, right at the time where you feel like, okay, and now we can, mm. now we could really use this. Yeah. And, um, it's always hard to do with module, uh, with modular, like the, the, the one thing I think I was going to ask you about is like, how do you do fast changes on a, on a, on a, on a six puts? Cause that's the yeah. hardest, like doing buildups and breakdowns, the kinds of things that you can do in a DAW where you've got the luxury of, yeah. of orchestrating this from, yeah. you know, out of the realms of time because yeah, you can exactly. just start and do it. Yeah. Whereas in a, in a live situation with a modular, yeah. you've only got like yeah. two pinching elements. True. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you can get it. your knee in and it's like, <laughs> so how do you, yeah. you can't make, you know, you can't make a lot of stuff change at once. No. And you have well, to almost embrace the progression or have you found ways to do, have you found well, ways to do that? Well, um, it's, uh, I guess, um, uh, I guess there are ways to, well, yeah, there's two things there actually. Like, um, uh, when things are hard, you can make it simpler, mm. um, especially in modular. Like uh, it, you have only two hands and, and you're trying to control a gazillion uh, parts with it. So uh, with modular, you always have the, um, uh, have the option to, if you can't reach it with two hands, 
then maybe create a button that does it for you. Mm. And then all of a sudden you don't even need two hands, you can do it with your pinky while you're doing something else. Yeah. Um, so if it's too hard to do, then find a way to make it simpler without um, doing concessions towards what you're trying to do. Now, the other thing is um, I have really uh, learned to appreciate filters for what they can do. Like um, uh, it's, it's not so, uh, um, um, what I find most, uh, effective in energy flow and stuff like that is not so much doing something louder or doing something just cranky and everything. It's um, finding a contrast between uh, your starting point that you still have fresh in mind and mm. what you're building up towards yeah. and the tension release. Like you always have um, this um, uh, uh, yeah. What do you say? It's uh, it's kind of like a uh, starting point, uh, tension release. Uh, and cycle again, you know, mm. and, and, and that's um, uh, and, and that way you can make the exact same movements 20 times in a row and every time you do it, it feels like you're just at one step thing. ahead of the yeah, last yeah. time you were there and it's just, yeah. it, it comes in waves once again. Mm. Um, and um, uh, I, I, I think those slight differences, you, you don't need to do everything at the same time, but like just slightly opening up a hi-hat or so making do you, that. So do you filter every element? Have you got like every, under a filter? Or, but you, are you saying that you use filters almost like mm. um, volume controls to slowly... In a way, definitely, just, yes. It's, just keep keep elements muffled or bedded yeah. and bring them up. True. Yeah. True. It's like um, as long as they're moving in a way. Like um, uh, for drums, you don't particularly need the filters as much as you need slight differences in timing, for example. Like mm. um, uh, slightly... Uh, extending the duration of your hi-hat or giving a longer yeah. tail to your snares or yeah. um, uh, making your kick just a little fatter, um, um, pulling it back and then doing it again. With melodies, I really enjoy uh, filters. That's yeah. um, because uh, uh, I, uh, I feel like we're super sensitive to the slightest changes in... Um, uh, um, um, uh, in, in 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 what you're bringing into your um like in filter sweeps yeah there's, there's so much like harmonic kind of like in a really good filter there's so many sweet spots that yeah. give you so many different timbres and like, exactly that they're all worth exploring yeah. especially when you add resonance to yeah. like really like peak them out true true yeah 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 it's interesting it's like the, this guy do you know stevio um, yeah 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 i mean mm. What a god! I'm not, Fantastic. The man, is, um, the man is the man. Mm, I so definitely. I worship at his altar. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but he, interestingly, he uses filters over everything. He says he doesn't really use volume. Yeah. He uses filters because it's it makes sense. And also yeah. to close down elements yeah. so that the drums start very low and rumbly. Yeah. And then he can bring them up and stuff. It's kind exactly. of what you're describing, but he's exactly. using it on almost every element. Yeah. You know, just to keep just to bring things and brighten and close. Yeah. Which is a good way of, it's an economical way of kind of adding variation without yeah. necessarily needing to change it. The thing that I think he does so like exquisitely well is how he's like swings. The, yeah. Like if you listen to the swing yeah. in, in his like Definitely. drums and that's, yeah. that's not always easy to do in modular. Mm -hmm. There's lots of like annoying technical issues like, yeah. like, like clocks that don't, yeah. Pass sure. swing on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That when you send Definitely. a swing clock, yeah. they just ignore it and yeah. stuff. Well, and it's, you've got like solutions. Well, it's a lot of the times there. It's um, um, uh, I I hardly ever use the clock out on any of my sequencers. Like uh, for example, with the trio uh, with circadian rhythm. Mm. Um, um, I'm not sure if that's a firmware thing or whatever, but at least in my version, if I open up the swing, it doesn't pass through the clock. Yeah. Um, uh, it it only passes uh, through all my individual yeah. um, uh, lines. So instead of using that one, I'm usually using uh, an actual um, uh, track on the circadian rhythm to send it to all my other uh, clock So games. you can have the swing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's because as long as there's not a clock divider or multiplier on the input side of, um, uh, of your sequencer clocking, then it will follow um, uh, so, each and every step yeah, that it yeah. receives yeah, as yeah. its next step. Yeah. So then, all of a sudden, all the sequences that were not listening to your clock uh, changes or, mm. or, or, or swing or whatsoever, all of a sudden they do mm. re respond to it. Plus, um, you can do that thing of like changing the gate pattern that's driving them. So yep. you, then you would like just turning the like the, the like tumbler just to sort of change it up. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. It's nice. Um, yeah. Yeah.
It's good. Yeah, like, uh, it's kind of, it's this eternal quest to, like, find the ideal. It's very hard, like, yeah. I don't know what, like, I think module has got such, it, it, it has the potential to create the great, the greatest live improvisational systems, but I feel like we're only just starting to, like, yeah, yeah. see yeah. artists that are kind of doing it. I think Stevio is, like, an example. He is, yeah. I would say he's the, like the most advanced in terms of because what he's done is so specific as well when you actually yeah. look at his patches and what how he's doing True. it he's yeah. such a good example of the dope for mm -hmm. philosophy where yeah. he's just got really simple elements and he's he knows exactly what he wants it to do True. and it's doing yeah. it i think yeah. it's um you know it's it's the opposite of buying those complex modules that just kind of do True. do everything do you know what i mean yeah. at once like, no exactly it's when you look at his rack it's what I saw of it was it was a uh, basically a massive dope for system. Yeah, and it is. And that's it. And it's <laughs> it is. There's very little. Uh, there's very little of like the cool and trendy modules. Yeah. It's all just dope for stuff. No, because it's like uh, you, um, um, in an ideal scenario, you would buy a module for its function and mm. not so much for the name or the brand or the uh, or, or, or or whatever else. But like. Um, if you need an oscillator, then any of the oscillators should be able to do it. Mm. Uh, they, all sound, they all sound pretty damn good. Like, yeah, they're, I've they're never heard fantastic. like a bad oscillator. Do you know what no, I mean? It's like even well, I, I, I shouldn't say even, but I mean the Dupfer ones are mm. most of the time well, more than perfect for what. Plus, uh, they have octave like. shifts as well, which yes. is like sorry. oh my god, um, um, uh, the polyphonic, the oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the quad. Holy shit, that thing is fantastic. That's also the, your, it brings in your promise of the polyphonic system at last. Finally. Full circle, full circle. Finally, it's, it, it, it took some time, but... Well, I did try, there. like, I did, I tried to get a demo of that at, like, NAM, but it was taking them so long to patch it up, I thought <laughs> I'd walk off and come back. I don't think I ever saw that thing fully <laughs> oh, working. It's like, oh, no, but that thing is ridiculous. It's, um, so can you just send, like... Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand how it works in that sense. It's well, like, it's, it's, do you need a poly sequencer to sort of run it, or? Well, no, but it's actually super easy. It's like um, uh, it has uh, you have one master uh, CV input, mm. um, and then you control all four voices um, uh, uh, at the same time. Mm. But you can also feed each and every oscillator its own uh, CV line. Okay, mm. uh, and that's how you make like the tonal differences. So really, mm. what you would need is a four track sequencer. Like and they are 101 like just, a 101 yeah, yeah. like a 101 and um uh, um uh, like that dope for module um uh, four filters four vcas uh, and four envelopes and you're done mm. um uh, and that's um um no but the sound of that thing was really is it yeah just yeah. sounded like yes, it's, 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 i just still i'm trying to wrap my head around what what that would offer that just like getting us, you know, like a polysynth and just yeah. sequencing it from the modular in some way, you know, getting a, a CC or CV to MIDI adapter. You yeah, know, why not just do that? Well, I think there's a, um, uh, the biggest reason, at least for me, is a very practical one. Like um, uh, every second that I'm not looking at my modular, I am not having the bird's eye view of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So I want it to be in my rack. And yeah, yeah. I want it well, to. I can totally relate uh, to that. And that's something like um, uh, I used to have a, a, a 909 and a couple of other things next to my setup, and I ended up never using them or touching them because I'm way preoccupied with. Uh, this is like having the modular setup. mixer versus the Mackie mixer. It's just like exactly. just, just let it all be in this one field of yeah. vision so that I can. That's just it. I want to be able to do this and see <laughs> everything I need instead of going here and going there. And then it's. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so. Uh, for me, that would just be the answer, like the immediacy of having it right in front of me versus um, having to mm. even just doing this is already too much. Yeah, no, no, I totally relate. Yeah, there's um, I saw someone does like a little string synthesizer in like modular, which like I don't know if that sounds any good, but it's like literally like a f eight HP module that's like okay. got, it's got MIDI in. Yeah, so it's like MIDI sequence, but it's a Eurorack module. So okay, you'd have to get like a module like the you know, squap her mod or something yeah, yeah, that exactly. can out output MIDI. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, hmm, actually, okay. I, lo I loved the same thing when there were people just going, this is stupid, how can you? I was like, you don't, <laughs> you've clearly never played a live show with a modular. It's yeah, like, it just, I just want everything to be in that case. You want it right there. Let exactly. it all be a self-contained beast. Yeah, that's just it. Um, I was going to ask, I mean, this is sort of, we covered this, but it's just, it's an interesting one 
to sort of talk about is like what I mean obviously I may know your feelings to a certain extent but like what for you like what is the importance of live music because it's talking about the whole thing of this it's a philosophical problem that personally I've been yeah. struggling with which is like you know if you if you know how electronic music is made it's really hard to enjoy or I find it hard to enjoy shows when yeah. I see that they're, yeah. they're kind of not really doing anything yeah um, and that's sort of fair enough in the sense yeah. that it's hard you know once you do yeah. know how the magic trick's done true you can see that it's it's not fun anymore true but but an audience member doesn't know that and yeah. so an audience member all they care about is the music and yeah. as far as they're concerned the only thing that matters is the music yeah. and not the difficulty or, or, or the, the sort of the balls of True. the musician. Yeah, yeah. And so for then it's like we say, oh no, so if someone comes to see a Colin Bender show, it's like they are maybe not, or they see the system. Yeah. Or maybe they don't see the system because if yeah. you're playing in certain environments, it's probably going to be quite hard yeah, for yeah. you to actually even see. They'll yeah. just see this box and your yeah. head. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the point? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, like, I, what's I, the I, point? I what and, it's, yeah, yeah. and it's that... Yeah. And you start thinking, well, fuck, like, what is the point? And actually, <laughs> maybe if I just had a, you know, you just make the perfect show yeah. and play it and hit yeah. play, but but find some other thing that they can latch onto visually. From yeah. an audience's perspective, they'd enjoy the, the fake show more. Or would yeah. they? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. And this it's, is what I've been struggling with. So yeah. I'm like, well, you know, in trying to create improvised live music that truly celebrates and, in, and is, is the, the purest expression of what I think live electronic music can yeah. be I'm, I'm making it really hard for myself I'm risking having shit yeah. shows yeah. becoming hated and, and not booked for yeah. future things because I'm failing or because yeah. I'm doing you know I might do okay yeah why bother and why not just do yeah, you know what exactly. I mean so no, I, know I don't what know what you you, how you think yeah. about this as well it's like because well, you must be having these thoughts yeah definitely and I think um, um, well first off I think um, uh, it's you can't really compare um, pre-recorded music or, 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 or what is it listening to an album or listening to a song to going to a live show it's, yeah. it's like two completely different worlds and it's um, then if you look at a live show from an audience perspective one of the biggest reasons for uh, uh, for someone to go to a show is to hear music um, that they like at incredulous volumes <laughs> <laughs> like finally you can listen to something at 130 dB yeah, going yeah, crazy last. blasting out your eardrums and, and shouting to people like this is amazing <laughs> and, and and that alone is uh, is already worth it yeah. like yeah. living the music being in there and going like holy shit it, it sounds even better when your eardrums are rumbling along with it you know mm. and um um well, yeah, you can also do that somewhat with headphones and, uh, and one of those sub-backpacks, yeah, but yeah. it's still not the same. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, because the other thing is um, uh, you actually enjoy doing it together, like having a good time, being able to look at each other, going like, this is awesome, right? Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. grab a beer. And, you know, it's so the whole happening around that is so much more than just the artist standing there. It's, uh, it's the whole vibe of you're there, there's this gargantuan sound system there's uh, the, the, there's weird lights smoke noise you're sleep deprived you're drunk out of your ass and it's uh, your friends are puking in the bathroom and it's just it's it's one of those nights you know? yeah, yeah yeah and the communion yeah it's it, it's just you uh, like the day after you wake up you go like holy shit that was worth it and mm. um it's a certain celebration that is so ridiculous you cannot recreate that sitting on the couch with your cup of tea and going like yeah okay i should keep it down maybe and, mm. and then listening to one song there you're done with it it's so um yeah basically i guess um yeah this is kind of a ridiculed version of what a live environment is but in um in a lot of the case especially within electronic music that's more or less the deal mm. uh now um, a big part of all this also is the whole energy flow and the whole energy tension. And um, that's something that can only come from the one person who's in control of the sound system and go like, yeah, listen to this or maybe listen to that. Mm. And that person has to feel good about what uh, he or she is doing. Uh, now, um, some people um, uh, really just want to have it in check and in control and uh, and just have a perfect set with perfect order of tracks and just go like, fuck it, I'll, I'll just play CD. And it'll be fine, uh, and I'll uh, and I'll have a good time with it. And um, uh, other people need more of um, um, justification, maybe for standing there, or mm. 
uh, or, or doing something with it, or actually doing something that is that actually only really works or excels in a life situation. Like, um, um, uh, for example, in jazz music, uh, a lot of what's happening there at the good shows has to do with being there in the moment, which um, the energy that builds up in that room makes everyone kind of lifts them to an exalted state of doing better than they've ever done before, which you cannot capture on a record. Mm. Um, and I guess therein kind of lies the key, like, is it actually beneficial to the way you're making music and you're perceiving your own music? And having that equipment, does it actually push you to do better than you would do without it? And I mainly think that that is somewhat the question because from an audience perspective, well, indeed, nine times out of 10, they don't care. Like mm. uh, if you have good blinking lights, you put up a funny mask and, uh, and the music is loud then it's going to be a good time anyway. But if you're standing there going like, what the fuck am I doing here? Then you're probably not going to do well. Hmm. And so while you're there, I might as well enjoy it. So um, Do the thing that makes you happy when you yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. Do it in such a way that you feel like you're taking enough risk to justify that you're standing there, enough risk to keep you focused and on top of things, yeah. to make you do things that are better while being uh, watched by people standing around yeah. you and at the same time if risk is too ridiculous like for example if you go like yeah i need manual uh, power supplies as well so you're gonna sit on a bicycle and power up your own <laughs> electricity while you're doing it well that's probably taking it too far but in that same sense there may be a certain elements to your life set that you could do without and then have more control over the things that really matter for you mm. Um, but that's something that only you can tell um, uh, where lies your min maxing and how your setup works. Yeah, yeah. And but um, I, I definitely can. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, and it's like that idea that by by giving yourself, yeah, you're putting yourself at risk. But because you're giving yourself all this control, if you really are in the moment, you really are. You have the maximum control of your yeah. system. In an ideal world, if you've created the perfect system, yeah. then you should be able to always craft a better show. Exactly. And, exactly. And it, your joy will yeah. come across. Exactly, right? and that's the whole thing. It's um, uh, from there on, you are kind of ping-ponging that energy flow, and it's and then it's not so much about the risk you're taking, but about the awesomeness that is actually happening because the, because of the way that you're doing it, mm. which in the end results in better music, which becomes the reason why people enjoy it in the first place. So yeah. I think that's it. But if uh, but it shouldn't really be about showing people what you can do or um, uh, in the end, um, um, in a very weird way, it's not really about you <laughs> or something where you're doing something like that. But by doing a good job at it not letting revolve around you, it becomes um, something that everyone enjoys, which later on becomes like, holy shit, that was actually a great job there, you know? Mm. Um, um, yeah, I, th I, I, I think that's... Um, somewhat the way it works or at least um thinking about it this way is is how i would mm. explain it now i feel better about it now <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i asked you that nice okay i suppose then the final sort of question is to talk about and this is maybe something that we can talk about the future of modular design but yeah it's a question that i've been asking everyone is like what what do you see as the 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 most wholesome future of music technology. Where do you see, and I mean, obviously today we're talking about live systems. It doesn't have yeah. to just be that, but it's where where you think, where do you think things should go? And where do you think things could go? Mm. And it may only just be the things that you want necessarily. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Uh, where it should go. Uh, Purely in terms of uh, of technology, or it could be technology. It, it could be um, the power. It could be the way that we interact with equipment. And I suppose it's to get people thinking about. It could also be like, hey, within the modular world, we've probably already got all the parts we need to build the ideal systems. It's like, how would they work? You know, what would it be? But it's yeah. a sort of open. It's an open question because it's it's getting people to think about what is, what could we do better right now? Yeah, you know. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, well, a very, very practical one is 
we got a whole shit ton of modules right now, but case designers, please start focusing on better cases. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to s travel with that shit, so. Oh, mate, this um, is, and I have literally been going through this. I literally just got my new case, like, yeah. two days ago. I've um, gone down, you've gone up, but where you've managed to find, like, light, lighter systems. Like, yeah. what, because for you, what is the ideal case? Like, and what, what are the problems? Um, I, uh, the ideal case, it depends. Like, when I'm traveling, I need... Um, uh, I need a case that fits as much as I can in as lightweight as possible, in a sturdier case possible within the airline regulations yeah. so that people don't start throwing up my shit. Yeah. So um, the best I've found so far is the Amalgamod one. Mm. Um, but I think he's completely overwhelmed by uh, the attention he's getting. Like it's, um, it's just one guy and he's doing all the orders himself. So it took me like, I think over a year or oh, two man. years or something to actually get my cases, but they're simply the best I could find. So mm. it was worth the wait, but, uh, he's the only one doing it like that right now. And are they like so, metal cases or are they, uh, like, these like, are, uh, I, I think they're carbon fiber or something. Right. It's, um, uh, it's a very sturdy type of plastic really, but, um, uh, it's literally the only case I could find that fits within uh, airline regulations that gives me four uh, rows. Of 104. Uh, of, of 104, yeah. exactly. And um, so, yeah, I'd say really, really, really start looking into um, a, a good portable case design. Mm. Um, because we need to travel and we have to play these shows. Like exactly. People, you I need mean, to get out of the studio and yeah. you need to go and actually. No, play but I think people. that's also one of those things that's going to happen right now. Like, um, how long ago did the uh, Eurorack boom really take off? That's like, it's like 2008, basically. I think like 10 years now. Yeah. Like, uh, well, but no, I think that was that was more the early adapter phase. I guess it's like when you really look at it, like um, the Nam. Uh, uh, the first time I went to Nam. Um, it was really four desks somewhere in the basement put against the uh, mm. back of the wall. This was 2015, 2014, something like that. Um, two years later, I came back and they had covered the entire main hall. Mm. That was, yeah, they'd I think that up, was 2015, They moved up from like Hawley yeah. and they were now they're like the first thing yeah. that you come across. It's all of a sudden it was this show. massive big thing and everyone was talking about it and it was buzzing. Roland started making modules and mm. like everywhere you looked, you really, so, and so, so I'm, I'm, I actually think like the real big boom happened only a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think that you, you are right. It's like, I've been into it for a bit longer, but it's true. Yeah. I, it's, when I first started getting into it and like, and it was six, seven years ago, Yeah. seven years ago, it was, it was kind of like only like tip top make noise was yeah. just starting to do like the format exactly. jumbler and stuff and it yeah and it was just like beginning the sort yeah. of almost exponential curve exactly but it was but you're right like, no but that was really the start of it like yeah. there was only a handful of eurorack companies and back then it was actually still a discussion like should you uh, pick your rack or should you go five U? Yeah. And by now it's no longer it's a discussion. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it, well, it's well. Sorry to the five U people. Yeah. Hey, five U is still right, fantastic, mate. but it's most of the people right now. They're uh, they will automatically assume they're going for your rack when they're mm. talking about going a modular. modular. That's kind and of a back then it was actually still kind of a power balance because both of them were somewhat obscure. Only your rack had more stuff mm. going on. But uh, if you look at it now. Uh, because I think I got into it around that same time then, like seven, yeah. Um, yeah, six, seven years ago. Yeah. Um, and if you look at it now, it's a completely different world and landscape. It's like, well, there's so much out there, but the biggest, you know, the biggest point in that is if you pair that with the learning curve of modular, like, um, um, uh, it's, it's complex material. So, mm. uh, only by putting in a lot of time, you will start, uh, uh, learning and mastering it. A lot of people bring it into their studio to, start working with it. Uh, some people will never actually take it to a live environment, but the ones who do need some time to adjust and adapt to it. Mm. Um, it has had a tremendous boom and boost within the producer community. Like, um, uh, uh, Noisia has gone deep into it. Uh, Amon Tobin has started working mm. a lot with it. Uh, well, yeah, Dead Mouse has always been yeah, yeah. Uh, an adaptive, uh, um, but, but, but then you got Phoenician Snares who's doing yeah. things with it. Uh, Surgeon has been using it a lot, but um, Ben Clock has got a massive mm. modular system now, and it's uh, like all these guys are using it more and more and more, and slowly they are starting to pull it out live. Yeah, and I think that's gonna be uh, that's somewhat the turning point where um, 
uh, all the people who got into it a couple of years ago are now somewhat getting ready to they're start like, chilling. Like maturing their, their yeah. abilities. With, like surgeons not bringing his opt to track out anymore. No, exactly. It's, it's just like uh, uh, he's going with that rack. Like um, 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 fucking hell. Um, uh, Richie Hotton. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, like he's doing his massive modular show now. I'm bringing it mainstream, and it's. Um, uh, and all the DJ kids like uh, how everyone was like oh I'm going to be a DJ when I grow up or whatsoever but after seeing a show like that now you got this stuff going <laughs> and I really think like the big wave of people that's going to bring this stuff to the stage it's people are going to get completely sick of it and then it's going to be saturated and then it becomes the norm mm. and it's going to be awesome <laughs> yeah. I, I really can't wait until that happens because all those people who got into it like two or three years ago are now uh, feeling confident enough yeah. to actually start playing it to people Mm. And um, I think in that respect, where it's going to go is um, uh, more immediacy because people want to play it live. Um, uh, the big battle between DJs and Eurorack is uh, a DJ has better produced songs and better sound um, uh, at, the, at the expense of less control over what's actually happening. Mm. Eurorack has way more control over what's happening, but... Uh, a more complex flow to do it mm. and if he mix so probably yeah and it's hard and, and also just mastering the build-ups and breakdowns yeah it's exactly. like you know that's yeah. that's the beauty of, of produced records is true yeah 50 changes can happen in one split yeah. second we can't exactly. do that it has to be a slow progression yeah unless people design tools that are the, the one master controller that for lets example you do, i mean I, I, I think more of those things that probably do somewhat macro control within your sequencing it's a dangerous topic there because uh, you, you kind of relinquish control by mm. adding that in. But yeah. I still haven't found the proper fill machines, for example, uh, or yeah. the, the things that really make you switch everything yeah. in one go, or yeah. the uh, the handy mutes that uh, that, that, that yeah, make yeah. you really switch through things. Yeah. Um, uh, the real macro controls that with one hand uh, let you do everything at once. Like yeah. I am kind of dreaming up of a. Um, uh, what I probably am going to build within now in a year is uh, a setup with 21 uh, frames, uh, like the mutable instruments. Oh, as in you literally will have 21 mutable instruments frames. Exactly. And taking one of those, controlling four, uh, controlling 16, you know? Holy that with shit. one knob you, you get... Uh, <laughs> Colin's 16 six, hands. The exactly. spiders. The spiders. Yeah, but then the, the, the thing is that idea. you control 64 individual parts with one knob, you know? If you just uh, and you can zoom in like just one section or a bigger section or the entire setup. That but, sounds amazing. So yeah, it's probably like macro control is something that would be lovely to see, but not sequencers and stuff like that. But things Wait, that the, go beyond the human that. control. That exactly. Way. It's yeah. um, mm. and the other bit is uh, probably um, I would love uh, um, just like the um, uh, the sidechain compressor more live mastering aid or live mixing yeah. aid stuff something that can just kind of listen to what's going on and help you balance out what's going on there like um, the uh, have you heard of dugan auto mix for like for, for doing like that's for doing like presentations it yeah. like just manually rides yeah it automatically rides the speech probably yeah. Um, yeah 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 it's i mean um we need that yeah it's <laughs> like people are probably going to hate me for it because everything is going to be generic is the fear first fear but on the other hand um, no, it's not. If everything has a baseline uh, sounding awesome mm. level, mm. that you can just fully focus on what you want to do and yeah. everything is just going to yeah, yeah. come out better. It's like, um, at the same time, it's probably incredulously hard to make something like that happen. I know, like, no, nah, DSP mixer. You put a little, yeah. hey, hey, you can put a little, like, they've got all these awesome shark processes yeah. and, you know, all the chips that, they're, that you know, yeah. mutable instruments modules use and stuff. Yeah. That's a great idea. The auto mix, I'd, I'd want one of those. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. just um, uh, just something that you go like, all right, so um, um, I don't know, whatever. It's it, uh, it's it's probably very easy to get kind of an uh, an understanding of how things should be leveled, mm. um, and then just let that mm. let that happen. But I I think um, more immediacy, um, better life cases, and um, uh, and and sound aids. Things that and like, yeah, some of the things that can just do some of the helping hands for you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that you can focus on what matters, you know. Like more or less, yeah. Crafting, yeah that's the, the, the crafting the thing that's yeah. riding the wave. Yeah, that's the whole thing, I guess. And that's, um, 
um, I would really enjoy those developments, mm. um, uh, I guess. Well, if you're watching, module developers. <laughs> do it. Please do it. <laughs> Come on. That's nicely. Come on. Uh, well, please, man. guys, would you build these things for me? <laughs> well, I hope you have an awesome show. Yeah, man. Thanks. Nice. Good luck. I'm sure you will. You've got a couple of hours left to go. I'm, I'm Get some really sleep. looking forward Get to this. Sleep. I think it's going to be awesome. We all sleep. Holy crap. It's, nah. It would be wise, but at the same time, I'm afraid I won't You're way up. too excited to do that. Yeah. Fair enough. I know that I'm feeling. just going to run circles, I guess. <laughs> all right, man. Thank nice. you very much. Cool. Yeah. Thanks Cheers. so much, man. It's fun. And stop. That's a Colin. Yeah, love him. He's nice. And yeah, my thought there, wow, I mean, like that point about kind of embracing improvisation leading to just you, the musician, having a more joyful experience. And the fact that you're having a more joyful experience on stage coming across to the audience and enhancing their their experience, I thought was a pretty friggin' great point. And it did genuinely renew my faith in trying to do something difficult on stage uh, the audience might not realize that you're doing something difficult but if you really really enjoy it it will show and that will make a difference uh yes so that's it and after we had our chat um we packed up and we stood outside and then we talked about Iceland, actually. I was talking about the fact that when I was at Superbooth last, um, he had to, he couldn't go to Superbooth because he was in Iceland. And it made me sad that I'm not in Iceland. Because um, the other thing is, I just got a new hardware case, which is portable. So I can go on a plane. So if you're in Iceland and you'd like to book me for a show, I'd love to play. Thanks. Get in touch. And that's it. Thanks, as ever, to excellent sponsors, Signal Sounds. You the best, and to you, you the best. So till next time, we speak again. <laughs>